we bout to party. Unrestricted. Got the house now. We gon' turn it up. AEW Unrestricted. I am Aubrey Edwards here with my best friend. Will Washington. Yay! I didn't tell you that I was going to drum roll into you, but I like that you got it. <laughs> That's all right. This is what we do. We're professionals here, so we, we know where we're at. Oh, man. So, so love is in the air. Obviously, yesterday was Valentine's Day. And uh, we were in Austin, Texas, one of Cedar Park, one of my favorite places that we visited before. And one of the things I really like about AEW is we're seeing all of these relationships kind of pop out of it, whether people come together because they've been a couple before and they're all working together again, or whether you see relationships kind of blossom backstage. I'm particularly excited for one of our guests today because not only is she in a loving relationship, but I think independent of that, she is just a loving human being. Like Valentine's Day doesn't have to be a ro- romantic love. It could be about friendship, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got someone great today. We've got an amazing person. She's just a wonderful human being. She's a, just an absolute, absolute gem that we've gotten to see grow and thrive on both Collision and Ring of Honor. So, yeah. And of course, we are joined by AEW Collision interviewer and Ring of Honor interviewer, backstage correspondent extraordinaire. She is the one and only Lexi Nair. Lexi, yes. thank you for being here. Oh, I'm so pumped. Thank you guys for having me. This is awesome. I'm so excited. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, this is, no, it's great to have you here. And you, yeah. you've been with AEW really for a very, very long time. Let, let's talk about the, the, the start and what got you into AEW to begin with. Well, I guess um, a little bit of nepotism, if you will. Mm-hmm. Uh, That's wrestling. <laughs> yeah. My uh, my stepdad is uh, Diamond Dallas Page. What? So, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he's great. Love him. And, and yeah, basically, like I, prior to him coming in my life when I was 15, I had no wrestling knowledge, no wrestling experience. Like I knew who Hulk Hogan was and like, that was about it. And then he came into my life and then like my mom, my sister and I, like our world kind of was like, okay, this is this, we are fully immersed in it. We have to like learn the lingo and like all this (laughs) stuff. But even then, like for, you know, those first probably so from the time I was 15 and then I started AEW when I was like 23. I don't know. For the first like eight years of like him being in my life, I, I did not plan on getting into wrestling. I had a totally different career. And yeah, I was actually speaking of careers. I was, do, I was a makeup artist. So I was doing makeup on Cody Rhodes in 2019 and they were joking around <laughs> saying, uh, oh, we need somebody to film this like YouTube thing. This like control center. Have Lexi do it. And I'm sitting there. And I'm just kind of like, what? Because like you, like people who know Cody, like know he's a jokester and like he is like sarcastic and like he just like says stuff. And I was like, ha ha, good one. <laughs> um, he's like, no, for real. Like I think you'd be good at it. Prior to him saying that, about three months earlier, I had met Bill, my fiance, and he looked at me when we first kind of met, like the first few days, and he was like, you know you should really think about being on camera. I don't know if this whole like makeup thing is like your deal. I think you should like, if you ever get the opportunity, you should really take it. And I'm like, that is not me. Like I'm behind the scenes. Like I don't, I have no camera experience. Like, I don't know if that's a great idea. So fast forward to Cody saying that, uh, I did hear that little voice in the back of my head. So I was like, okay, I'll, I'll do whatever you guys think I should uh, do. But I, I promise you it's not going to be great. And um, and it wasn't. It was really bad. <laughs> yeah, the YouTube, uh, the YouTube Control Center first few were really bad, but they believed in me. And uh, I feel like that's the whole, that's the whole thing about AEW is why, like the million reasons why I love it. And yeah, they just, I just stuck with it. And eventually they were like, put her on TV. And I was like, oh God, <laughs> help me. I'm so scared. Well, so what, we're always our own harshest critics, though, because I remember those. Con- <laughs> I do remember those control centers. Oh God, please, for the will. <laughs> no, 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 no. But legit, I think that it's one of those things where you can see like untapped potential there. Like it's, but I, I know that when we see ourselves, I, I, I work with people all day long who yeah. rewatch their promos, and these are people who are on TV regularly. Sure. And they'll rewatch their promos and go, "Don't show me that. That's awful." And I'm like, "What are you talking about? Like this is literally getting like all the but everything." And it's right. but. It's, it was one of those things where you could almost immediately tell that, okay, this is somebody who does belong on television. This is somebody who is wow. going Thanks. to, to 
this is somebody who is going to be on television eventually. And so, no, I, I fully understand. But we all are our own worst critics. I, I tell yeah. Aubrey all the time that, like, when I watched her stuff in 2019. Yeah, oh, I was trash. But <laughs> I watched it back then. Didn't think twice about it. I would just... No, she's a great referee. Yeah, and, but yeah. I watch her now compared to then, and I see the improvement. And so, yeah, yeah it does feel night and day. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. but no, no I, I, I fully get that. They had me like, they were like, can you memorize all this stuff? And I was like, no. <laughs> and they were like, can you read off of a teleprompter? And I'm like, barely. <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure I'm like, I'm diagnosed dyslexic. Like, this is just a terrible <laughs> idea. Like, oh. But yeah, and I, dude, I, God, I was so nervous. Like, the nerves didn't wear off for a long time. But so that's how I got into it. So random. <laughs> I like that everybody's sitting here like, Lexi's great. She has this untapped potential. And Lexi's like, all right, well, I'm just going to kind of go with the flow and hope <laughs> yeah. for the best here. <laughs> Which is great because now she's like on TV and part of this amazing storyline in Ring of Honor. And it's just like, if you look like back then versus now, it's like, well, that's not the same person. Like this no, person no. is like incredible and at the top of their game. Thank you. Oh my God. I have so much fun on Ring of Honor. It's the best. It's one of the best parts of my job. I love it so much. <laughs> you know, it, it is fascinating. Again, watching that evolution. Like when I, I, I was sitting in the arena because I, I had to watch the Minion graduation ceremony. I had <laughs> oh to watch God. that. And thinking about that evolution of yeah. going from doing Control Center on YouTube yes. to all of a sudden being live in an arena and in a, se in a segment that was getting tremendous. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And and just thinking about going from where you were then to suddenly being a, a, an important part of an incredible story and being yeah. an important character and all of this, like that just had to feel amazing, I imagine. Yeah, it, it did. So like going back to what I was saying earlier about me being nervous, like those first few months and ultimately like the first few year, even if into my second year, like I would be standing, like doing an interview and I could feel like I'm not exaggerating. And I'm sure other people feel this too who are in front of the camera and who are new. Like every muscle in my body, in my face, like it was like clenched because I was so nervous. I didn't want to mess up. I didn't want to be the reason why we had to do another take of something. Ultimately, like I was like, that's just how it, how it goes. I was a lot of the times in the beginning. And I was just so nervous. And I thought to myself, everyone's being so nice and they're telling me I'm doing a great job. But I'm like, when is this going to stop? When is this like this fear? Like, I, I love what I'm doing, but like, when is this fear? When is this, when are the nerves going to go away? Like something has got to get like, or else I can't like this stress. Like I can't, I can't handle this slowly, but surely the more I have so many people like who help me, you know, but like everyone always says like, just more reps, you'll be fine. Like, just keep going, just do it. And it's, it's so true. It sounds so simple. And like, but but it's the truth with more reps like one day like i just got to tv and i was like oh yeah i'm not really i'm not really that nervous and like i get nervous don't get me wrong like of course like totally get nervous that minion segment when they're like yeah we're gonna go out into the ring and i was like we're gonna we're gonna do what we're gonna me i'm gonna get there sorry are you guys sure about this like i don't know if this is a good idea and yeah not to mention i was in like the cap and gown which was so ridiculous but I'm down. Like I love, I love that stuff. Any anything like involving like props or like the silliness, like that's so me. I I'm so into that. So yeah, going out there, even though like we were deep in this story and like <laughs> I got like wrapped up into it, I was so so nervous. Like I was holding Billy's hand in the ring, and I could feel my hand like vibrating because I was like, if I fuck this up, this is a big moment right now. Like it it's not. Like, I don't care about looking like an idiot. It's about, like, I don't want to ruin this for them. That's the biggest thing. Because, like, I was so terrified of that. So, like, that added to, like, <laughs> the nerves and all that. Thank God it, like, it went great. <laughs> and they were like, and then you're going to do an acceptance speech. And I was like, <laughs> guys. <laughs> like, thank you for, like, having faith in your girl. But, like are you sure about this? <laughs> this is, and Tony, of course, is like, he's so wonderful. And he like loved, like loves this story. At, at, in that moment, he was like, so into it. He was like, yeah, and then you're going to do this and that. And like, I'm trying to get hyped up before we go out there. But that was incredible. It was so cool. And like, so, I had so much fun. But like, whoa, I was nervous <laughs> in that moment. Uh, but it, it was good. It was great. So I'm, I'm happy it, it worked out. <laughs>
one of the things I like about that moment in particular, and I think it kind of summarizes like why you're great as a backstage correspondent, yeah. is the story you were telling with your body was so incredible because Athena announces that you, that you're valedictorian and your face is just like, oh, really? It's <laughs> me as the entire, like, they're not mad at you. No, they're no, mad no. at Athena for not giving Billy this moment, yes. right? Yes. And you're just like, hi, this is great and <laughs> wonderful. And it's, it's you being you in that moment, but that itself is just telling the best possible story. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, she's just not there and not realizing it and just ignoring the booze and it was i was watching it backstage on the monitor and i'm like this is so good this is so incredible it was so loud it was crazy like they how were loud pissed. it was they were so pissed and i i don't know like on camera if you if you can really tell but like when you're in an arena and again i've never experienced this before so i i don't know this right I mean, that was the first time I've been in there. Like, I've ring announced, but, like, that was the longest time I've, like, really been in a ring like that where it was, like, all eyes are on you. Like, it's never happened to me before. Like, you're hearing this, and it's deafening. It's so loud, and you don't know what's going on. Like, I was blown away. Like, I, I really underestimated <laughs> the fans. I am I was so happy for the reaction for that. I'm glad they were mad for Billy, that, like, Billy didn't get it. That was a whole thing of, like, what we were going for so the fact that like they were so mad at it it was great it was it, it couldn't have gone any better honestly yeah that crowd was amazing <laughs> yeah no legit i thought that was one of the best things we've done ring of honor <laughs> so far and so again cool. like aubrey was saying like the the way you played your part there and stayed lexi through the booze like how what was the feeling like having to stay you through all of that? <laughs> I could, I don't know if I could even put that into words because in the moment, it's like you have this like outer body experience, right? Where you're like, okay, the camera is on. I know I have to continue, but it's so distracting with how loud it is because you can't hear yourself. It's not like you got like a little earpiece in your ear. Like when I would ring an ounce, like I would have a little earpiece in my ear. I could, I could hear myself, you know, kind, kind of know where you are. And it, in that situation, it's just like, you don't know, especially me being so green and like not, not knowing what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, wait, I don't know if I answered that question. I'm really sorry about that. Oh, how did I, how did I say me? <laughs> right. I honestly think it was like looking at Athena and Billy was, was able to like center me and keep me focused and like knowing like that we're just trying to drive this specific story and, and playing along with them is just so much fun. And like, it's so easy, even though Billy and I are supposed to be like siblings, like buddies and like, we're in this together. Like ultimately I do what Athena says out of fear. You know, I, I love her and I respect her, but like, I'm also <laughs> deeply terrified of her. So yeah, the fact that like I got valedictorian, like, yes, Billy, get on. It's my time to shine. Yeah. It's just, it's this dynamic that, just kind of meshes together and it's i don't know it's really cool oh it just gels it's super cool yeah it's, it's so great and i i love rehashing this moment and there's there's just a lot of other stuff that like lexi's been a part of that is so memorable on both aew and roh and i'm excited to talk more about it here on aew unrestricted Yay! aew unrestricted aubrey and will talking to wonderful amazing lexi nair Lexi is one of those people that like she's killing it on screen because you see the growth that she's doing. She's becoming more and more of Lexi Nair, the character on TV. I love your moments with Dalton Castle. Like those have been some of my favorite pre-tapes that you guys have done. But one of the things I want to shout out Lexi for is like Lexi is one of those people that makes sure you look good regardless of what it is. So we were in sure. London. I, I just got my makeup done. I was wearing this dress and I was like, I look really good. Like, I feel like a friggin' snack right now. I need to take a picture. So I go to some random you person like, hey, it. can you take, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I go to some guy and say like, hey, can you take a picture of me? And he takes one photo and I'm like, oh no, 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 no. So I find Lexi <laughs> and say, can you help me take a photo of this? She pulls out her own freaking like ring light oh, yeah. and it's like okay let's go we find a spot that has like the big all-in logo and she's literally like laying on the ground like taking photos of me and people are walking by and she's just like yeah. yes okay okay and i'm this sure i have like 12 i have twelve thousand photos on my phone of me in different angles in this dress 
And this is typical Lexi. Like you'll walk yeah. around backstage <laughs> and she's on the floor taking pictures of somebody like as they're sitting on like a road case. <laughs> and she's like, OK, good. We got this. Work it. And yes. it's like, <laughs> the importance of having people like that, that like we're building you up on this podcast, but like you're building yeah. others up <laughs> in like these little ways. And I just I love it so friggin much. <laughs> Thanks. No, I, no, if you ask me, I'm like, say less. I got you. I got you. Girl. Or or guy. Like, hey, if the guys want to come to me and they're like, they want to get snap some pics, we can do a little photo shoot. I have a light. Julia Hart and I are really good friends. Like, we're best friends. And Anna, like, it's like a little trio of us. But I'm like, we are a whole team. If you need lighting, like, we have lighting. Somebody will be the creative director, direct you with, with posing, <laughs> and somebody will take the photos. So we have you covered on all on all bases. <laughs> but but yeah, that's, that's hilarious. Yeah, it was very on brand for me to do <laughs> to be on the floor hanging from the ceiling like trying to get the best angles yeah exactly. <laughs> that is literally me yeah if you're watching the podcast i'm literally like falling out of my chair pretending <laughs> yeah. to get lexi just like yeah hey, here we go yeah this is definitely one where you're gonna want the visual yes yeah, yeah. yeah. definitely <laughs> watch the video on this one yeah definitely watch the video if you're listening to this on audio go back to this specific spot in the podcast speaking of video i knew that before we even started this when i got scheduled i'm like oh this is going to hands down be the best lit guest we've ever had on the show <laughs> i don't know i'm like hoping for this i'm like oh these windows uh i don't know if i need extra lights but like it's fine <laughs> it's great you're great okay. you're doing great <laughs> good cool so I, I wanted to ask you a little bit about the the early AEW days you were brought up on tv very very early on in in 2020 ish there were yeah, yeah, going yeah. to ddp's what ended up being ddp's last match mjf uh the former aew world champion was actually name dropping you quite a bit on tv yeah not yeah. not in the most complimentary fashion um but no, it was don't say yeah but it was really i would say the first time that a lot of fans got exposed to your existence right what was that like what were the what was the feeling like around all of that so basically max and i uh we were friends and we were friends before i even got into like aw and and as like a backstage interview when i was still fully like a makeup artist so i met i met max at cody Rhodes' fourth of july party i went there uh, with my stepdad with with dallas met max and his sister alex she's wonderful love her uh met him and then we all just like hit it off we all hung out it was, it was so much fun and then like our friendship continued and so it was really funny when that whole feud was happening like he was like are you okay with me saying this and of course like he had asked Dallas like Am I, are you okay with me doing this la, 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 la. and I was like yeah I don't care like he has at the time like it, it's I, we're a, a family of four in terms of like the girls Dallas's four daughters including me so like I'm like I'm not even in the wrestling world period like no one knows it's me like it could be like the three other daughters like you know my sisters or whatever but like in the in those moments like watching it knowing that like I'm Max's friend. I'm the one that he's like talking about in this in this feud. It's just it's just ridiculous. But it was so it was fun. It was fun. Like you can't you can't help but like not laugh at it or like I, I'm sure like some some people will get a little like offended or and whatnot. Like so my my real father, like my biological father, I have I'm very close with him. And him and my stepdad Dallas are besties. It's crazy dynamic, um, that they are. wild. <laughs> yeah. And my mom and my stepdad are divorced. And my dad and my stepdad are best friends. So it's like, we got a lot going on in our family. But hey, it's it's what works. It's our modern family. It's, it's fine. But like my own father was more, I think, offended than like I would, would have been. <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. I thought it was so funny. But my dad was like, I'm going to kick his ass. And I was like, dad it's wrestling like this is fake please <laughs> you're better than this you you're better than this dad like this is not this is not real life um max and hair we're friends we're cool like it's fine um yes yeah, so my dad was really upset <laughs> and then my dad eventually like met max i think we all like came to town like when aw was in atlanta my dad was there he met max we we're all like joking and like it, it was fine but um <laughs> but yeah that was a really fun moment for sure <laughs> so i want to talk a little bit about what a show day is for you because I know with like Saturdays, 
collisions sort of like the big priority because it's live and we, we we have to go on air at a certain time. Yeah. A lot of the Ring of Honor stuff happens after, including all of the interviews and stuff. So you're one of the people that's at the venue later than literally everybody. Yeah. Your days are very long. So I'm curious, like, what does a show day look like for you? Like, what do you do to prepare? Like, how much information are you given ahead of time? Like, what's that look like for an interviewer? Well, I get to the building and immediately, like, I try to get coffee, try to eat something and then Right after I'm done that, I start doing my own makeup, my own hair, getting dressed. I'd like to be ready as soon as possible because sometimes I just don't know when I'm doing stuff. Sometimes they'll be like, all right, Lexi, we know you have some stuff today. Just be ready as soon as possible. But we don't know specifics. There's been a few times where uh, <laughs> I've been you know, not fully ready. And they're like, all right, we need you right now. And I'm like, are you serious? right now my hair is I, I look like a, a gremlin like i'm supposed to go out on tv right now i, I gotta get it together yeah so i have to uh, immediately like wrap up what i'm doing a lot of times aubrey's been the one to be like all right lexi like let's you gotta go and i'm like i'm trying i'm so sorry but uh and then sometimes i'll be fully ready and hang out for a few hours and then they're like okay go and then basically as soon as i start my interviews it's pretty like balls to the walls from there. I'm pretty busy from, from the time my interviews start till the end of the night. I will do obviously like the stuff on TV. If there's live segments, like there's that. And that's a whole different thing than like doing pre tape because there's so much more to prepare for. Everyone's got to be on the same page. I have to, you know, have my earpiece in, be hooked up, make sure the audio is right. That's a whole thing. And then from there, if we have post-match social things that need to be filmed, I will occasionally do those. And then after that, we immediately roll into Ring of Honor. Because Ring of Honor is taped, we have the luxury of being able to have a lot of time to do things and like do redos and, and whatnot and uh, retakes. I mean, but that can uh, sometimes I can have, gosh, like three or four interviews. And then there's other times where I can have like nine interviews. A lot of the times I am uh, the last one to be in a locker room and... I've missed the bus a few times because of it. <laughs> so uh, uh, that's just how it goes. It, it makes it so much. It, those little things like missing the bus or like being the last ones in the last one in the locker room. I don't even think twice about it because I I have so much fun on Ring of Honor. It makes it all worth it. I don't even think twice about it. Like yes, I'm exhausted and I can't wait to get back to my hotel room. But not once am I like. Oh my god, I can't wait for this night to end. What time is it? Oh, when is the last bus come? Like. I'm just like, all right, let's go. I'm, I'm, I'm ready. For, are we good? Okay, then we're done. And then, and then I get to go back to the hotel and sleep. <laughs> sleep like three hours before you get on a flight yeah. and go home. <laughs> <laughs> That's the real job. And I'm sure everyone says that. That's the real job is, is the travel. It's not fun. But I, I will tell you as guy who usually is the very last person to leave the yeah, arena. Sure, sure. I'm always hearing in the background as everything's going on. I'm always hearing ROH pre-tapes and uh, hearing you and Nyla going at it. Like, That's it's a new a one. Yeah, me and I. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it's always great. Yeah. We never really get to peel back the curtain um, for sure. fans on the idea of the live interview versus the uh, the taped interview and right. a recent example, just a few weeks ago, I, I, I watched you do a live segment with Private Party and Top Flight, right? And like, oh, those boys, I love those guys. <laughs> you know, keeping it together with with Zay giving you a do rag and all of that, and I'm like, <laughs> and, and this is absolutely as live as live television can be, and yeah. watching you keep it together uh, as you did was very impressive. And so I, I oh, want to ask the, the, the feeling of doing live interviews versus doing the taped ones and uh, what that level of preparation is like and then what that feeling's like as you're out there. So for that interview specifically, I walk in, mind you, like I'm fairly good friends with everyone. So like we have a, everyone has like a candid relationship. I feel like that's just, that's just how it is in AEW. Like everyone's just friends. You have to. And it's so like casual. It's like, do you mind if I put this do rag on you? And I'm like, what? In the interview? And he's like, yeah, this is like 30 seconds before we're like live. I mean, I don't care. You know me. Like, I, I was out like in a cap and gown for Ring of Honor, like doing interviews. Tony Khan is standing next to me. And I'm doing interviews in a graduation cap and gown. I do not care. If you want to like put a costume on, like I'll, I'll put a costume on. Like I, I'm, I'm down for it. So I just thought it was funny that like before a live 
segment he was he asked me that i was like we couldn't have like talked about this before but it ended up being fine it was so much fun keeping it together was really tough because there's something about the element of it being live where like you know that you cannot fuck up in a pre-tape there's a little less pressure not to laugh and in in funny moments right like you know you if you have you, you know you can do it again you have the luxury of being able to do it again in those live segments you're like you you better keep it together or again or you're gonna ruin it for everyone else again i don't mind like i said before i don't mind looking like an idiot i just don't want everyone else looking like idiots because of me i actually sometimes surprise myself in live interviews being able to just get it right because even like even though i've done hundreds of pre-taped interviews at this point there are some times where I will mess up on like the first take or second take or like I have a brain fart or we need to do it again. There's a switch in your body that just goes off when you're in a live interview that that says to you, okay, like, do not mess up. You 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 got to keep it going. And there's been one or two live interviews where I have felt myself stumble and then immediately intuitively just correct it to where it's not really that noticeable. I notice it. If I look back at it, I notice it. But versus a pre-taped interview, if I stumble just a little bit, then I'm like, all right, sorry, guys, can we do that again? But you cannot do that when it's live. And and when I do live interviews today, I, I'm not going to lie. I still do get a little nervous. <laughs> I'm, waiting, I'm waiting for that to kind of eventually decrease. And it has. Mike Mansuri, who another person who's like helped me tremendously, like when January first started, he goes, "All right, 2024, we gotta get you out out in the ring doing interviews." And I'm like, "Okay, I've never done one of those before, but like, I'm sure it'll be great." Okay, let's do it. And I, a lot of it is just like, just go, just do it, just swim, and and you'll learn. So yeah, I feel like that's the that's the biggest difference. I like the idea of Lexi just being a baby duck that we're throwing in the pond. Like, there you go. Just swim. <laughs> yeah. No, and I, I feel that because like, it's not intimidating because I have so many people around me who are just like, yes, yes, baby duck, Lexi, keep swimming. Like, you're doing it. Like, go. And and it's so cool to like feel that around me to where I don't feel, even though I'm nervous in those moments, it doesn't swallow me. Like the fear of that doesn't swallow me. I know that I have people behind the curtain who are just want me to do better and like want me to improve, which is, I mean, doesn't get any better than that. Like that's just, that's just the coolest thing ever. It's so great. We are talking to baby duck Lexi Nair here on <laughs> AEW Unrestricted. More coming up after the break. AEW Unrestricted. It's Aubrey and Will and we're with our guest Lexi Nair. Lexi, let's talk about, uh, your personal life just a little bit here. oh okay because uh <laughs> you brought him up earlier you, you brought up your fiance bill yeah and for those unaware that's a bill that's of the big variety <laughs> yes as opposed to the tiny a very large bill <laughs> yes it's a, a, a large william we have here but yeah uh we're talking about <laughs> big bill yes former one half of the aew world tag team champions Somebody that fans have been familiar with for a very, very, very long time. Yeah. I want to start with the fact that you mentioned that uh, you never really were into professional wrestling until DDP entered your life. Mm -hmm. Uh, And Mm -hmm. all of a sudden now, not only is wrestling your life, but your fiance is a literal professional wrestler. You're stuck forever. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, You're you're like stuck in this forever. Uh, So how did you meet Bill? We'll start with that. I met Bill in May of 2019. So we're coming up on five years of wow. knowing each other, which is crazy. Like time has literally flown. It does not feel like five years whatsoever. So I met uh, I met him through Dallas. <laughs> yeah, basically Dallas. Uh, at the time I was living in Atlanta, my stepdad Dallas and my mom were still together. We have people come over all the time and we had wrestlers come over all the time. For the most part, they were older wrestlers. So they're like, and again, me not knowing anything about wrestling at the time, right? I mean, like, I knew enough, but it wasn't, like, I didn't know current wrestling. I had a relationship with uh, Jake the Snake and Scott Hall and, like, those older wrestlers who, like, in Dallas's life, like, I knew them and their stories. But anyway, so when they were like, oh, yeah, Cass is coming, which, at the, like, that's how everyone calls everyone by their wrestling name. So I met him as Cass. And mind you, for the first three years we were together, up until we were engaged, practically, I called him Cass. And the whole family <laughs> called him Cass. 
I'm not lying. Once we got engaged, I was like, I should probably change your name in my in my phone to like Bill or Billy. <laughs> you still knew in the phone as Cass. <laughs> even my mom was like, and I'm like, it, like all of us went to the story. But even my mom, when we were making our wedding invitations, she goes, "Um, are you gonna put uh Cass or William?" And I'm like, "Mom, his name is William. Where we have to put William <laughs> on our wedding invitations. I can't put." and like no we can't do that <laughs> anyway uh so i met him through dallas so they're like okay uh, uh Cass is gonna come stay with us for for a few days he's a wrestler or whatever and i'm like okay whatever he's just staying in the basement for a few days working out with dallas like <laughs> nothing i haven't seen before okay i'm in my bathrobe no makeup this is like early morning hair's looking like a rat's nest all of a sudden the door opens, I'm making breakfast and the door opens, he walks in the kitchen. I turn around and immediately I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> y'all couldn't have like let me know that he was cute and fine and like you, you couldn't give me a heads up. <laughs> or just, I'm just out here looking like a, a toe, like come on. So me, <laughs> I like turn around, I'm like, oh my God, I'm so embarrassed. I just like stop making my breakfast and I run upstairs. And I'm like, I need to like get it together. At the time when Bill tells the story, he's like, yeah, I met her. And she was immediately rude. Like she was so rude to me. Like I thought, wow, I'm going to have to stay in this house with like her, her mom and her, her stepdad. And like, this girl is just, is not nice. Like, great. And then later that night we were chatting and, and that's when our, we developed a friendship and we got to know one another. And he's like, oh yeah, she's cool. She's, She's not a bitch. So great. Because <laughs> I was like, immediately, I was like, oh, God. Oh, no, no, no. And I like, I said hi, but like didn't look at him in the eye and and ran upstairs. Like, I was mortified. I was very thrown off. Um, but, and yeah, so that, that is that is the day we met. Not very romantic in the slightest, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, I, I also just love the wedding invitation story because that happens all the time. Like I got a, yeah. a, invited to a wedding a while back and it had two names on there that I did not recognize. And I'm like, who the hell are these people? And then like do a little Googling. You're like, oh, Duh. right. <laughs> oh yeah, my yeah. God. Yeah. The amount of times where you're just like trying to change how you're referring to somebody. And I say this as someone who doesn't go by my real name. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like everyone calls you Aubrey. Like I know you as Aubrey, I know your name is Brittany, but like I call you Aubrey. That's like my first it, what, what comes out of my mouth. Oh, right. Bill's the same. Like he has, he doesn't care. He has like five names. When he went to rehab, people call him Will. Like all of his friends out of rehab call him Will, which like no one calls him Will. His friends from <laughs> home call him Bill. His family calls him Billy. He introduces himself as William, which I think is really funny because it's just, it sounds so regal coming out of his mouth as he, and formal as he's like, I'm William. William. And I'm like, well, okay, dude. <laughs> and uh, and then uh, there's Cass. So he has like five names. And he's like, I'll take whatever. Whatever you got, I, uh, that's me. <laughs> As a fellow William who who has <laughs> yeah. shared every single one of those nicknames, <laughs> yes, I yes. can fully <laughs> sympathize with having multiple family members who call you variations of all of those things. And then yes. the one that's like completely off. Like uh, I have all of those. So I fully get that. And I sympathize <laughs> yeah. with yeah, you get it. with Mr. Morrissey. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Morrissey. Uh, but no, that, that, that's really cool. And the fact that like every time I see you guys together and, you know, I've shared an Uber with you guys and it's, uh, yeah. yeah, no, you guys are always so great. And it's like, it's one of those things where you say it's only been five years and, it, but it feels like it's been such a short time. But at the same time, like, yeah, you guys just seem like you've been together forever. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's just fit. Thanks. It's such a great pairing. Oh, thank you. Yeah, he's the best. Uh, not to get like too sappy on here, but yeah, you you think about it like, especially like, as, as like a little girl, you're like, oh my god, I wonder what my husband's gonna be like when I grow up. Blah blah blah. Is he gonna be this, this, and that? Um, I want him to have X, Y, Z qualities, and um, he ticks every box in, in in that realm. And of course, like, everyone has their flaws, but it's it's just crazy how much. It, we just mesh together and, and the basis of, of our relationship is that we're friends. We are, we are best friends. And I know Aubrey, like, I, I don't know your situation well, but like, I do know Aubrey because like we are friends and like your, you've been with your husband for so long. You guys met in college, but like the basis of your relationship is friendship. Like, you know, that you have to have that in order to have like a long-term sustainable relationship. So 
the fact that like I found that in him and even approaching like into getting into my 20s where I was just like, oh my gosh, am I going to, you, you know, you date around and whatever. And you're like, oh my gosh, am I going to find someone who ticks all those boxes for me? Or am I going to have to sacrifice some of these things? And the beauty of, of him is like, I, I, I don't, <laughs> like I don't have to sacrifice any of those things. And even I was with him in his lowest and his darkest of times. And even in those times, I, I, I knew in his soul, like in his heart and what, who he was that I just stuck through it. I just had a, I just had a gut feeling, even though, yeah, a lot of people were like, what is she doing? <laughs> this is not a good idea. <laughs> yeah, we just, we stuck through it. And I, now that we are where we are, it's just, it, it's crazy to see everything that we've been through. It's wild. It's going to be great because when you eventually do the, do you take someone in sickness and in health, you're like, already did, bitch. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we said. I'm like, look, if we can sustain two rounds of rehab and all those relapses, like we are good. Like there is, there is nothing that you can't put past us, I feel like. So through all of that, we have just come out so much stronger. Looking back, he's a completely different person for, for the better today, obviously. But yeah, I was able to to see him through all that. So crazy. You're so supportive. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, thank you. He's, he's the best. <laughs> all right. I want to get back to you for a little bit because uh, you've sure. had some awesome, memorable moments. One that I saw recently was like you and Dalton Castle backstage talking <sighs> yeah, about his Dalton. friend and he like falls into like one of the like crates and stuff. <laughs> Um, yeah. So in my mind, it's like, he's great to work with. <laughs> Who are some of your favorite talent that you get to work with? Why are you doing me like that? Oh, wait, come on. The thing is, like, the list is so long. The list is so incredibly long as far as like who I love to work with. I love to work with everybody. It's just about being able to have the opportunity to do multiple interviews with them, right? Like, I love working with private party. But again, like, that was probably the first time I've gotten to work with them. I and mean, obviously, Mark came back and everything. But it's the first time I've gotten to work with them in a long time. When I was doing stuff with Speaking of, of Isaiah, when I was doing stuff when there was like a Hardy compound going on, like Matt Hardy, Ethan Page, and Bill, Isaiah, and like that whole thing, like that was great. But today, and like what I'm in right now, Dalton Castle, just, he lights up my world. <laughs> he's the best. <laughs> and, and then, just a beautiful disaster. <laughs> he's a train wreck that you can't take your eyes off of and I love being a part of it and, and same goes along with like right now obviously he's feuding with Johnny and Taya they're also just so great and 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 so good at what they do in terms of like just being so campy and like cheesy but in the best way possible I obviously without it goes without being said like I love working with Athena and Billy and now Nyla the cool thing about like all of these people is everyone they're, they're such a collaborative effort and at first when I started doing when I was involved in consistently in these interviews with them they would kind of look to me and be like okay Lexi like what do you think and I'm like this is about y'all I don't really have an opinion I will do whatever you want me to do and, and it's great that they do that but but now even though I'm not like outwardly voicing my opinions I do feel a little bit more comfortable like well I feel like you know it'd be cool if we did this and and they it's it's so much of a collaborative effort now and I feel comfortable now that like I'm in the mix with them and I have more of a closer relationship. And yeah, especially getting to work with Dalton now. I mean <laughs> some of this stuff like we come up with especially with uh it's mostly him, right? He is so creative and and the way his mind works is is just fantastic and he knows his character so deeply. But now our dynamic of what we have, especially that he he is a walking train wreck right now, I and playing off of him like his uh, like his older sister or like his mother who is just like believes in him, but is just and like wants to pick himself up from the bootstraps. But I'm so frustrated with him because he just keeps <laughs> doing like he just he just keeps doing it over again. This is the same series of events um, keeps digging his own grave. So uh, but in these moments, in these interviews, <laughs> it could be about like the location, like we're just collaborative in that sense or um I don't know. He really allows me to spitball or like come up with things like all like the little one liners. Like that's just all he's just like, yeah, just say whatever. And I'm like, OK, how do you want me to play this? And he's like, whatever feels natural. And I'm like, oh, Are you sure? OK, here we go. Th those people like I'll t I obviously like, I love working with, with so many people, but like right off like the, the top of my head right now, because I'm like very deeply involved in like the Nyla. Billy Athena 
storyline and the Don Castle, Johnny Taya storyline, like those people off the top of my head are everyone brings me so much joy to work with. It's it's so cool. Well, you have been an absolute joy to work with, no. even though we don't get a lot of time together <laughs> on screen no, or yeah. really ever. I don't think we've ever been on screen at the same time together. But like, oh, no, you're one of those no, no, people. No, we have. Aubrey, when? when you attacked Karen Jarrett. Oh, that bitch. In that inter- yeah. <laughs> when you attacked Karen Jarrett, I was interviewing them and you came in like bad hell. And lunged at her. Right. And she kicked me in the chin. <laughs> yes, that was the only time. I feel like the only time we have ever, we've ever, right. I, I, I think so. Yeah. And it's funny. It's funny you say that because I completely forgot about that because I was so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Either way, this was an incredible uh, interview. This was an incredible oh, story. Thanks, I like guys. that in, in Lexi's mind, it was like, did not know she was heading this path, but like everyone else were like, oh yeah, no, this was inevitable. <laughs> so this has been really great. I love all the duck references. I love you and Bill together. I love yeah. seeing your growth on TV. I love seeing who you are as just a wonderful, bright person coming through on camera. Thanks. This has just been so great. And I wanted to thank you for being here today. Oh, thanks guys. I'm super happy. This is like my first like real official podcast so thank you for uh Ooh, for- the interviewer got to be interviewed <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah it's crazy so yeah i've had so much fun i i could go on and on about like how grateful i'm and, and even you guys just being so supportive of me and like wanting to see me flourish and 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 everyone backstage it again down to tony khan like he him stopping me in the hallway and telling me like you're doing so great on like ROH collision, like him taking time to stop and acknowledge what I'm doing. Like everyone, Renee, Mike Mansuri, RJ, like everyone who, Tony Schiavone, Sande, like it, it, it takes a village to build me up. And I am just so grateful for this opportunity for just being able to work for AEW is just, is, yeah, it's a dream. doesn't get any better than this, honestly. Oh, that's so great. And it's, it's great to have you here. And this has been an excellent conversation. You can <laughs> <laughs> you can catch uh, new episodes of AEW Unrestricted every Thursday on your favorite podcast platforms. You can watch video editions of this show every Monday on our YouTube channel. AEW Dynamite is every Wednesday on TBS at 8 p.m. Eastern. We've got AEW Rampage every Friday night on TNT at 10 p.m. Eastern. AEW Collision is every Saturday where you can see the one and only Lexi Nair. And that's every Saturday, <laughs> 8 p.m. on TNT. She's also on Ring of honor a big part of ring of honor that's available on honor club watch roh.com every thursday this has been aew unrestricted i'm will washington she's aubrey edwards we'll see you next time yay Bye. come on throw your hands up let me see you unrestricted get the house now we gonna turn it up up bring the house down got that big space pump and make them bounce now Blousing like they bouncing in the freaks